Hey everybody, Nick here, and today, do some disassembly and maintenance on this little guy. This is the, um, uh, uh, P671CB from Ruiki Rake Knives. So this guy needs my help. Um, it feels very gritty, and in fact, if you, uh, pop it open, you can hear it's just dry as a freaking bone. And that's not great. Um, so I want to be able to, um... I want to be able to get in here and service this guy. So let's go ahead and start by taking this guy apart. So actually, back, a funny story. Um, uh, when I first started to take this guy apart, I tried to remove this screw. And I then came to the conclusion that it was permanently threadlocked shut because it just wasn't turning. Um, but actually, what's going on here is that this side is fixed and this side is not. Which makes this kind of strange because you, you remove this screw on this guy, uh, this side and this screw on this side. Not the end of any worlds, but it's certainly a, a bit of an oddity. Um, whoa there, we have a rubber... Oh, of course we do. We have a rubber spacer here in order to make this uh, pivot the right length. And you can already see on the tip of this pivot here some kind of thick old grease. Um, oh, they do love doing their greasing, don't they? Okay, let's see if what we can pop apart here. One option, one possibility that we've got going on here is that there are... Uh, please tell me that's not screwed in from the other side. No, no, it's not. Okay. So I should just be able to lift this scale off along with the backspacer. And I'm holding down on the clip right... or on the, the, the blade right now because that's the one thing I don't want moving. Like, there are many things in the love world I want, but I want that blade to be out of play. Um, as I'm doing this, more than many of them. So actually, the other approach is just to pop the pivot loose here with this G10. That gets that blade out of play, which then allows me, at least theoretically speaking, to pop this back. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Freaking... <laughs> Maybe they're making these at the Vaseline factory. <laughs> okay, so the reason I'm a little disgusted is th 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 this thick old grease they're putting in here. No wonder. And then the bone dry pivot. No wonder they're freaking... This will run, I hope, a great, a great deal better once I'm done with it than when I started. Like, at some level, I can understand this. This is a budget-focused Chinese company. The thing you are probably not going to see is, you know, copious amounts of highly detailed hand assembly. No, they're doing their best to get these things into boxes as quickly as they possibly can. Uh, and so there is always, on this low end, um, there is always the fact that when you use, uh, when you as a, a f actual user and the owner go through and try, really do your best to take it apart and to do right by the knife, you're going to do a better job than the factory people had time to do. Not to impugn their skills as knife makers or anything like that, but just it's like they, 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 they fundamentally they have to make 30 of these in the next 10 minutes or, or they're going to have a bad time. And so, uh, yeah, go ahead and booze up another Q-tip here. I'm using rub rubbing alcohol, 91% isopropyl. If you ever curious about the tools I use during my knife disassemblies, go ahead and check my knife disassembly toolkit video. I will talk all about that there. Um, but okay, so then these two sides are clean. The blade is clean. Let me get uh, all up in the pivot here. Yeah, it's cleaned out now too. So now what remains are to clean off these damn bearings. Uh, try and get this grease off of them. I've occasionally wondered if there's like a bacon rendering plant right next door to the Roiki, and they just, you know, at the end of every shift, throw their production into there to grease them up. You know, find a big old vat of bacon fat. It's not kosher. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, anyways, that's beside the point. I, I, I don't actually believe that, by the way. I have no... Frankly, you'd expect them more of a bacony smell. That could, frankly, in the EDC world, that could be a, a perk for them. Like, ours are the only knives that smell like bacon. And some hyper-masculine jackal would find that to be like, oh, yeah, <laughs> that's what they would say. Is <laughs> I have no reason to believe any of this. Frankly, I, it's been a long day, people. I'm just, I'm just ranting at this point. All right, so I'll clean off the pivot here, get the last of the gunk off of it. Um, there we go. 
And now we can go ahead and put this guy back together. Okay, so I'm going to do this upside down because unfortunately the pivot mounts into this side. So we put the pivot here. I put the knife pivot loop, which I'm going to use on this guy because why not? I put the knife pivot lube right there and right there. Beautiful. This will allow me to set down a bearing, which really just badly doesn't want to spin. It's a little tight around the pivot, but whatever. I suppose. And then I'm going to go ahead and lubricate the pivot a little bit. What do you do for fun? I lubricate the old pivot. All righty, uh, then we're going to go ahead and now that that's done, drop the blade onto this. Take a little bit of lubrication, put it up in the detent ball hole. And there we go. Again, these bearings are a little tight on here, but whatever. Okay, next step is to install the stop pin. Beautiful. Next step is to install the scale. Hmm. Now, oh yeah, huh. so this pivot is D-shaped, so I need to make sure it's properly aligned. It needs to face down towards the point of the handle. All right, how do I do this? Oh, good. There we go. There we go. So that's why that wasn't wanting to pop into place there. Pivot was just not facing the right direction. Okay, so now pop this back in. That should be good to go. Oh, I screwed something up in here. No, it's just all the various million pins trying to get into alignment here. Oh, this is D-shaped and rotates freely. Okay. So I need to make sure that D shape is in alignment as well. And before I can... Come on. There we go. That's popped in. That's popped in. That's popped in. Damn it. My backspacer is not. All right. Try this one more time. Slide backspacer up here. Okay. Pop the... What I'm actually going to do here is use this screwdriver to rotate the this thing until it actually plops into place. There we go. Now we are properly rotated and orientated there. I'm going to go ahead while I've got things ready here and just put some... Is this screw bent? No, it just looks that way because of the washer. All right. It's just got to work. Come on, work for me here. All righty. So I've tightened that down. Now I need to put this other screw in the back here. Say T6. Put that there. All righty. Seagulls are going to town out there. Huh. Still got that. Maybe it's the finish on the blade rather than the lack of lubrication. I'll go ahead and put a little more lube right there onto the tent ball. Yeah, maybe it's the finish. It's like the sandblasting on the blade is causing that. Weird. I've never had a uh, knife sing to me the song of its people. Yeah, whatever. Actually, that is kind of annoying. Uh, where's my uh, the screw? T8. Here we go. Loosen you up a little bit. Let's see. No play. Can we go looser? No play. Still a little loud, but whatever. Centering's dead on. This actually does front flip. There we go. 
if you are uh, so desiring. But yeah, there we go. We are all set. The musical Reiki. Rake. Whatever. Um, anyways, there you go. Hope this has been interesting to you. And uh, have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.